So with that being said, you were rejected from PA school. All right, it happens. Um, so now what do you do? And sometimes you're like sitting around and you're like, okay, like you're questioning yourself, you're doubting yourself. Am I good enough? Is this something that I really should be doing? Is the PA profession right for me? What's up, you guys? Hey, Donna, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Uh, it's a new year. Hope you guys are having a really great 2020. So if you haven't already done so, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below on any other video ideas that you may have for me um, so that I can get to those and answer some of your questions. So with that being said, you were rejected from PA school. All right, it happens. Um, so now what do you do? And sometimes you're like sitting around and you're like, okay, like you're questioning yourself, you're doubting yourself, am I good enough? Is this something that I really should be doing? Is the PA profession right for me? And um, that's obviously like the first question that you're gonna ask, but after you've come to the realization that yes, this is a setback, but I mean, you know, it happens to the best of us. Many of us have been rejected from PA school the first time. Um, it's actually pretty rare that people get in on their first try. So all that being said, what is it that you're supposed to do now? So I say go ahead and cry. What more do you want from me? <laughs> It is okay to cry and mourn this, this moment in your life. Um, it's a great way of getting those emotions out and it's natural and it's human and it just shows that, hey, this is something that you really wanted and you feel disappointed and that is okay. So go ahead, have a good cry, cry it out, mourn that situation. And then after you're doing that, get back and pick yourself up and get yourself together. So the second thing that I think you should do after you've already like mourned this situation and you've cried about it is to make a plan. Now, with that being said, in making a plan, you have to have a detailed plan. You have to have a timeline and your timeline and your plan should be realistic. Um, so what I mean by that is I've had people come to me in consultation sessions and they're like, yeah, I'm trying to apply this year uh, as soon as CASPA opens up, but you know, they still have several prerequisites that are outstanding that would not be completed in time for um, them to apply or they haven't taken their GRE or their GPA is currently um, low like lower than a 3.0 and so they're trying to figure out ways that they can boost that but with that being said, they would have to take several classes and therefore they would be knocked out of this cycle. So when you're thinking about all of these different things and you're evaluating your particular situation, um, after you have mourned and you've gone through and you've talked to, talked to the schools that you've applied to to see if there were any suggestions on ways that you can get better, you need to make a timeline and you have to make that timeline realistic. So. For me, when I knew that I was going to be a re-applicant, I was like, all right, so this is what I want to do. I want to apply by June 1st of the following year. Um, that will give me enough time to be early, but at the same time, it gives me enough time to get all my transcripts in, have everything together, and be set for when CASPA opens up. And so for me, I made a specific timeline on what I was going to do each month and at each step. And that is what I'm suggesting that you all do. Go through, look at your timeline, say, all right, you know what? Maybe I can't apply this year. Maybe um, by the time I'm ready, I'm going to be way too late in the cycle and I'm not comfortable with applying this late in the cycle. So with that being said, I'm gonna make sure that I'm prepared for next year. And then you can see all of the various different ways that you can better yourself in this year as you wait to apply for the following cycle. Um, for those of you that wanna still apply this year, you just have to make sure that you're aggressive in that timeline and you know exactly what you need to do at each step of the way. So the third thing that I suggest you do, um, and this is like you know my top three things uh, I really think that is important when you are a re-applicant and you were rejected from a program is to vet the programs that you are going to be applying to. So, <clears throat> what's uh, the weather? 
So I always talk about making sure that you and the program match, right? This is like a match. You want a match made in heaven. You know, you want to make sure that the program is going to be beneficial to you as a learner, but also that you're going to be beneficial to a program. You're going to bring something to that program um, because that is what they're looking for in the interview process. So they're looking to see, all right, well, what is this student going to bring to my prospective cohort? So in that, in that whole process of vetting the program, you need to look at the various different things that what the program is doing in the community, um, maybe look at all of their pass rates and you know their student teacher ratio, um, the various different uh, parts that makes this program themselves so that you can see how well you fit. Because in that, you're also doing research on the school to see if you meet the actual requirements. So sometimes I know we're really excited and we just want to actually like apply to schools and we're happy and that is fine. You know, you want to apply to schools, you want to apply as many schools as you want, but sometimes it's not the best option. Sometimes it's better for you to actually be strategic in the schools that you're applying to, vet those programs, make sure that you're meeting all of the prerequisite requirements, don't overlook anything. As a matter of fact, go through that CASPA application several times before you submit it so you ensure that all of the things that you need, your letters of recommendation, your personal statement, any additional school information, all of that is in your application before you apply and all of those things that you're applying with are in conjunction with what the school that you're applying with is actually requiring. And once you do that, then you greater increase your chances of getting an interview and ultimately getting into PA school. I hope this helps. Those are my top three things that I really think you should do if you were rejected from the schools that you apply to and you're going to be a reapplicant in the, the next coming year or so, depending on how long you want your timeline to be. Go ahead and mourn that situation. It's okay. After you do that, get up, make yourself a timeline and a plan on what you need to do to better yourself and then vet those schools so that you're making sure that you're making the best decision for you as an applicant. All right, if you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. If you have not already done so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and subscribe to this channel, like this video, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.